Jeep homesteading and today we're going to be working on a still uh, 038 AV super chainsaw. Um, my buddy in the summer brought a bunch of his small engine stuff for me to get up and running and part of the deal was um, that he would throw in an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, he had one and he always meant to clean the carburetors but he, he kind of just threw it in the deal. I got most of the stuff up and running, but you know, I'm running out of time and this one's kind of been giving me a little bit of a hard time. So I thought, you know what? I talked to him and said that I might be putting an aftermarket carb on it. And uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna install an aftermarket Chinese carb on a still 038 AV chainsaw. So let's go. So here's the saw. It is in really a decent shape. I mean, it's been used, you can tell. Uh, he picked it up. Um, I don't know off Kijiji or Marketplace or something like that and I don't think he's got it running yet um, he got it and it just didn't run so hopefully today we just get her up and running it runs like a champ so let's start doing the uh, carburetor someone got handy and made their own wig nut for the air cleaner and you take that off we'll remove the air filter going to remove these two eight mil nuts we're going to flip the saw over and we're going to take the screw out of here that holds the handle on This one has a flat headed screwdriver, but most of them have Torx. So someone replaced this at some point. And everything goes flying. So keep the handle. Okay, so you wanna get this linkage and you wanna tip it out like this and it'll pop out of place and then out of the carburetor. Okay, so one thing you wanna do is open your fuel tank let the uh, pressure out, close it again, and then pull your uh, carb up, then pull the fuel line off. If there's pressure in here and you pull that off, it'll just shoot fuel out at you. So there you go, there is the old carb. So this is the old carb, this is the new carb, and you can see the new carb for some reason comes with this bottom plate with a tube. Um, it must be a more modern saw or something. Uh, everything about this is exactly the same, except that. And what I think I'm gonna do is just switch the plate over uh, because I don't like the fact it's got a huge, huge hole there. Uh, I could just picture that getting caught up in sawdust and and then filling the diaphragm and then the saw won't run anymore. It's kind of unorthodox. Normally it's nice to get the exact same carburetor, but it is what it is. Okay, so we're gonna put that on here. take this plastic piece off and we're going to install it on this one that kind of helps seal the box a bit so we want to make sure that's back on so that's where the carburetor seals so you make sure that's all clean and all intact get the carburetor we're going to put the uh, fuel line on just before we push it onto the uh, carburetor studs I find that easier and then we're going to slide it in place make sure you don't jam the shutoff wire so there you go that's back in place now we'll put our two eight mil nuts on we're going to tighten them evenly
they go into plastic so you want to make sure that you don't kind of over tighten them because you can damage it but you want to make sure they don't come loose so you kind of just go back and forth and evenly tighten them so now we're going to put the throttle linkage in here's the old carburetor so it's going to sit like that it just kind of falls into the groove on the throttle uh, plate it's really hard to show you but you go in there and you kind of fish around you can see that the plate opens and closes you know you have it in the right spot now you get your little uh, needle nose pliers and I find you tip it down you tip the linkage down like that and then when you roll it back so you just test it out okay so there you go the trigger moves the throttle plates so you know it's in place the spring we push it down it goes underneath this flap on the uh, safety lever and then these little grooves you slide it in this is the pivot then you go get your handle put it down There you go, make sure everything's working. Nothing's caught. Okay, so now we put the air filter back on. Put the cover back on. Before you change the carburetor out, make sure that you dump the fuel, change your fuel filter. Um, I've already done that, so all I'm gonna do is fuel it up and we're gonna see if we can get it running but make sure you do that because it's super important. Uh, you know, brand new carburetor, next thing you know, you gum it all up again. Uh, it's really important to put fresh fuel and a new fuel filter. Now we got the carburetor on but it is really important that you adjust it correctly because two-stroke motors if they too lean which means not enough fuel uh, it's actually going to run too hot and damage the cylinder um, running too rich it's sluggish uh, so it's really important that you actually adjust the carburetor because if you get your chainsaw up and running and don't adjust it properly you'll end up blowing it up so uh, I'm going to uh, start it up and see if we can get it adjusted. Got the chainsaw running. It is running really rich on the low side, so I'm going to turn that in a little bit um, until that clears up. When you're adjusting the low side, uh, you're not pulling the trigger, but I had to clear the amount of fuel that was in the carb so now we're going to turn down the idle so your idle speed until the chain stops and there it is it stops now we want to check the response so you hit the throttle see if it powers up quick so now we're going to put it full throttle we're going to adjust the high and i'm making it more rich turning to the left it starts to make uh, sound like it's running rich and then you screw it in a bit it starts speeding up uh, and then you kind of try to go back and put it in the middle um, that is where it is more of a safe place to adjust it to so now we're going to see if it'll go back to idle um, it's not going back to idle so we're going to slow down the throttle until it stops the chain when we're off the uh, trigger we hit it again it stops so now we're going to adjust the uh, high idle so we're going to rev it all the way we're going to screw it open until it starts making a little popping sound screw it all the way in until it speeds up and starts sounding lean bring it back right in the middle and that should be it so now you just kind of try to uh, rev it a bit and see if it revs up without hesitation and if it stops when you let off the throttle that is it it is adjusted so there you go, the chainsaw is up and running. It runs real good. I really haven't had any problem with those uh, Chinese carburetors. They've been great. Uh, so next Saturday, we're gonna cut a little firewood. 
I am going to try to run it a little bit, make sure that it's running real good. I might have to adjust it one more time uh, and then I'll give it back to him so he can use it. Um, whenever the temperature changes, if you go from summer to winter, you need to adjust your carburetor or any drastic temperature changes because it changes uh, how lean the saw will run or how rich depending on uh, the temperature. So it's really important to be able to know how to adjust your chainsaws and uh, really take your time, especially when you put a new carburetor on here, nothing worse than actually possibly burning out your saw if you don't adjust it properly. So hopefully this Saturday, we're gonna take it out and give it a little try, but that's about enough for today and you guys have a good one.